Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's great to see everyone again for another opportunity to worship our Father in heaven in spirit and in truth. Um, also, thank you to our visitors. If you are visiting with us this afternoon, just let you know our church family are very encouraged by your presence. And we're so thankful that you chose to put God first today and to uh, worship him with his family here at the Honolulu Church of Christ. And also, if you have a chance to tune in via Zoom, we're so thankful that um, you have that opportunity to join us um, as well. Uh, before we kick off our lesson, I just want to give, I know the thank yous have been given out already, but again, I want to say a big thank you so much for our church family for putting together a very successful uh, VBS for the children and for the children too, who served and helped. Thank you so much for all the way from the youngest member of the team all the way to the, the oldest member as well. Thank you so much. And I'm sure that everyone who was a part of VBS um, learned something from the Beatitudes taught by Jesus in Matthew chapter five. So great job to our congregation. The future is bright. The future is bright. You may ask what this means or whose future are we talking about? The future is bright for this church. The future is bright for the Honolulu Church of Christ. And today's lesson, I want to go over why the future is bright for our congregation. And no, I'm not saying this because I'm your intern youth minister, but the future is bright because we have such an amazing youth group within our church. And here are a few examples that are listed in scripture uh, of young people, young examples um, of faith. We have young David, young David, or David in general, a man after God's own heart. We see here in First um, First Samuel chapter seventeen, the, and the Bible says, "And when the Philistine looked out, looked about, and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of." David, and we know the story that moves on. He goes on to be become a great king of Israel. And then we have our next examples, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, known for defying the orders of King Nebuchadnezzar because they refuse to worship any other God than the one true God and the one true living God. And we see here, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 3, if that is the case... Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. And we know the outcome from that. They were tossed into the fiery furnace. They did not die. And God was able to deliver them. Then our last example of faith in scripture, we have Timothy. Timothy, a young preacher, also a young brother uh, in the faith, very fond to the Apostle Paul. And he's known from his faith and his knowledge of the scriptures. And we see here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, when I call to remember it's the genuine faith that is in you, that is in you, Timothy, which dwelt in, first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it is in you, in you, Timothy, in you also, genuine faith that was in him. As we, as we move on uh, throughout our lesson, here's why the future is bright for the, Hon for the Honolulu Church of Christ because of the youth. The youth, they're the future. The youth are the future of this church. And we also must leave behind, do our best to leave behind a legacy of faith. Leave behind a legacy of faith. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19 says, For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him. This is the Lord speaking on uh, about Abraham. That they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. 
What are we doing to leave behind a legacy of faith for our young ones, for our children? Um, I just want to thank all of the parents of our youth members because, you know, you go through the hustle and bustle each and every day, going to work, trying your best to provide a living for your family, putting food on the table, um, making sure there's a roof over our heads and in Hawaii, it's not easy, and we all know that. It's, uh, it's, it's a paradise, but then again, it's very costly to live here. But the parents of all of our youth members, I, I thank you so much because you don't let the hustle and bustle prevent you from bringing your kids here to worship. And you don't let the busyness of life stop you from exposing them to, uh, to the truth. Having Bible time on your own personal time, thank you. Thank you so much. And let's keep doing that because you are leaving behind a legacy of faith. Next, you must avoid, we must avoid being a generation who does not know God. How dangerous that is. A generation who does not know God. In Judges chapter 2, verse 10, it says, When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel, Judges chapter 2, verse 10. It's sad to say that there are young ones out there in the world who have no clue who God is. There are young ones out there who have not, e not even took a, an opportunity to open the Bible, to open the Word. And the children within the body have a major advantage because they've been exposed to the truth, and that's because of you. That's because of their parents. That's because of all the parent figures we have in the, in the church. And our efforts in laying a solid foundation uh, of faith prevents us from, from raising this very generation. It prevents us from raising a generation who do not know God. Leave behind a legacy of faith. Point number two, why the future is bright for this church. Because the youth, they need to know. They need to know who the enemy is. They need to know what they're going up against out there in the world. And the enemy is the devil. The children are a huge target for the devil and its devices. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he, he may devour. And it's really sad because um, there's a recent survey uh, completed, it stated that gender identity is being taught in a high volume in most classes in America. And also you have other things such as trans male athletes being allowed to uh, compete with female athletics. And imagine the confusion that brings to the kids. Imagine the confusion that brings to those who grew up and trained their whole life just to find out, oh, I'm competing against the guy, you know? And then after that, you know, it's important for us to let them know that. It's important for us to make them aware of what's out there. And I know it's tough for uh, parents to control what's being taught in, uh, in classrooms, but if you're already teaching them, teaching them how to put up a defense for what's right, then great job to our parents. Second, we must not be ignorant of how the devil operates Paul says, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The avenues are endless for our kids to be exposed to things that they're not supposed to see. Uh, things such as uh, their devices, their game consoles, and we do a great job at limiting their screen time, and that's, that's one way that we can get, um, we can block off the devil by um, inter interfering with that. And when they come to worship, when you bring them to, when you bring them to church, when you bring them to church-related uh, activities, it's a great way for us to refocus their minds on what's right. It's a great way to refocus their minds on the truth. And doing so, we do our part in helping them stay sober, helping them staying vigilant, and helping them not being ignorant of the devil's ways. The youth, the youth are servants too. The youth are servants too. Train them up in God's word. 
the youth are servants to Proverbs 22 verse 6 says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it we get that saying you gotta teach them young teach them young to start training the kids what's right while they're young and to keep the teachings consistent to keep following up with the kids uh, it gives us a great chance that they will not forsake the teachings from their upbringing as they get older in age and help guide their path like an arrow shot from a warrior. Psalms 127 verse 3 and 4 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's Youth, the Bible says. Training them young is important because we have a goal in mind and we have a question in mind. Where do we want our youth to end up? Where do we want our kids to end up? That's the target. That's the target question. Um, in the Army, when uh, you go out to qualify to uh, for your marksmanship, they, they teach you to aim center mass aim center mass on your target. And um, it depends on your weapon system. If, you're, if your weapon, if you're shooting a larger weapon, one that's on like a vehicle or that's mounted, they, they tell you to, to bind your weapon so you can kind of guide where your bullets are going, right? So it can go um, to your target. That same principle applies to how we guide our children. And I don't know much about archery, as it's uh, saying here in Psalms 127, but I do know that when you shoot an arrow, you have to aim at your target. You have to aim at your target. And our target for our kids, for them, it should be for them to get to heaven. That should be the ultimate goal, the ultimate target. And then lastly, we must first be knowledgeable of God's word before teaching the children. Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and 7. And it says, and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Before we even hope to influence our kids, we must first look to ourselves. We must first look in the mirror. We cannot be a do as I say, but not as I do kind of teacher. Kids are smart, and they will follow the examples of their teachers and their mentors. And as we read here in verse 6, God is very clear on his command. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Initially, the, 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 the love must be in your heart. The word shall be in your heart. And just before that, in verse 5 of Deuteronomy 6, the Lord gave the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. We as teachers, parents, members of the church must love God faithfully first before we expect others to do the same. Especially if we, have, if we expect our children to follow suit. They must see it in us first. Then lastly, the youth is a reason to rejoice. They are a reason for our church body to rejoice. A growing youth group who are grounded in the faith can encourage the church body. They can encourage the church body. And the scripture that was read for us today, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, and it says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Within the last year, it's no secret that the youth's growth have headed in a positive direction. And while they grow, I know for a fact the church is just as edified, the church is encouraged too. Working with the kids within the last year, one thing I can say for sure is that they are hungry for the Lord. Our kids are hungry to serve the Lord. They're bold, they're selfless, they're loving, and they love helping um, helping others. They love helping when needed. In um, 
November, the, the young boys were assigned to lead devotionals uh, before the congregation, and they, they successfully delivered. In March, the youth led a whole worship service in the morning, and they successfully delivered. They led songs. They led the Lord's Supper. They preached from the pulpit. They did everything. The youth, your youth, the youth of our congregation. Also, every Wednesday, they're very active in our Bible class discussions, um, our Bible class teachings, everything. The kids are involved and the kids are engaged. They encourage me every day. Their zeal encourages me every day, and I, I hope it encourages you too. Their conduct, their love, their spirits, and their faith are great examples to me, and it should be to you. Just to go over what we covered, the youth, they're the future of the church. May we continue to set up the future for success. The youth, they need to be made aware of the influences of the evil one. Let's keep our kids grounded so their, so their guard is always up against the devil. The youth are capable of serving the Lord too. The kids love to serve the Lord. Let's channel their zeal for God's kingdom. And the youth can give us all a reason to be joyful. The youth grows in faith. The church should also rejoice. I want us all to pay very close attention to the, the beautiful people on this picture, to all the smiles and just the happiness that the fellowship of our kids brings to um, the church family and to one another, the happiness of the children. I was um, assigned today to give somewhat of a farewell message, but it's not a farewell message. It's a see you later sermon. It's a see you later message. And I just want to, I just want to share with our congregation that the children of our congregation need our help. They need our help. They need our attention. So I encourage you, our church family, I encourage you to remember the youth. Think about the future of the church. To think about the type of servant that they can be. To think about the great things that they can do for the Lord. We see that, that they are capable of many great things. We just need to provide guidance, attention. We need to pray. I also uh, believe that we underestimate the hearts of our kids. We are um we underestimate what um they are capable of. Uh, last year, one of our uh, youth members put on Christ because being surrounded by the encouragement of the church family and also the encouragement of um, other youth members. See, uh, Brother Yona always engaged with the kids. And uh, this is the type of zeal that they have. We just need to bring it out. They love the Lord so much that they want their peers to put on Christ. And this is the type of uh, God-fearing generation that we can build up. Just need to put a little effort, just a little effort. And um, in February, we had a we had another member of our youth make the greatest decision of putting on Christ. And I had the awesome opportunity to um, to baptize this brother. The love of God is there. The zeal to serve in the kingdom is there. 
The love to bring others to Christ is there. Our kids just need help finding it. The future is indeed bright. The future is bright for the Honolulu Church of Christ. Have you obeyed the gospel? If you haven't obeyed the gospel according to the scriptures, I invite you to come forward. If you do not know how to, hear us out. According to the scriptures, God's plan of salvation, you must hear the word of God. Romans 10, 17. That faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. After such belief, you must believe that Jesus is the son of God. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. After the belief, you must repent of all sins. Turn away from sin. And Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. After repentance, you must confess that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Son of God. Make that confession before witnesses. And after that great confession, you must be baptized, washing away your sins. Fully submerged in water, washing away your sins. Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And as you are risen up out of the waters of baptism, you are to live a faithful life to the Lord. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. If you are subject to this invitation, I invite you to come forward. If you're not in Christ, come forward and obey the gospel according to the scriptures. Let the church family know how we can serve you in any way. And I'll reassure you that the church family here is a great church family. Come forward as we stand and as we sing the song of encouragement.